No, uh, it's it's going to be great. Um, over to the uh, the Western Conference Final, which uh, should be great as well. And uh, this is going to be between the Edmonton Oilers and the Dallas Stars. We know there's some history here between these two franchises playing each other in the Western Conference Final. But uh, this is it. We've got the uh, we've got the Oilers and the Stars in the West, and uh, this series will get going on Thursday night. Uh, the uh, the Stars ended up knocking out the Avalanche um, in uh, in six games. They knock off the last two cup winners. Extremely impressive. And then, of course, Edmonton getting it done against the Vancouver Canucks in seven. So uh, let's talk about this series, fellas. Who we got, Case? First, I want to point out that I was 100% right about who won and how many games for every series except the Rangers. So uh, <laughs> everything I just said, forget about it because the Rangers are probably going to win. But uh, no, Dallas uh, Dallas came out in six, Edmonton came out in seven, and Florida came out in six. So I feel pretty good about myself right now. <laughs> um, that being said, I have a really hard time picking this series. Uh, I've been full-blown Dallas all the way through this season and in the playoffs. Um, but when I look at this matchup, these are two teams that create a ton of offense and aren't that physical. They're really not. Like Edmonton, definitely not. And Dallas, you th- you imagine them being a heavy style of hockey, but I have just haven't really seen the physicality from them. You know, Jamie Benn on that big hit, Mc- McNabb is really like the only real physicality i've seen from dallas so it's going to be a barn burn this series there's going to be a ton of goal scoring and i think that if you just play loose like that and it's going to be in a high scoring series i still give the edge to dallas because they let they make less mistakes and when the game is Going quick and and flying up and down the ice, the team that makes the less the least amount of mistakes is going to win, and that's why I'm going to pick Dallas in seven games. Damn! So I actually had a an, a much easier time with this series than I did the series in the East because I just look at these two teams and I think there's one that's clearly better, and and that's the Dallas Stars in my opinion. I think the Oilers are a good team, but. When it comes to depth up and down the lineup at all positions, including yep. goalie and maybe especially goalie, uh, the Dallas Stars just have the edge in every single position. You know, like up and down the lineup, it doesn't matter who's playing for Dallas. They're playing the same way. They're making crisp breakout passes. They're snapping it around in the offensive zone. They have two good power play units. Like I look at the Dallas Stars and I see them also as a team that you know, has the ability to shut down the stars on Edmonton. And we saw, you know, in a lot of games in that second round series between the Oilers and the Canucks, when McDavid's shut down, then all of a sudden it rests on Dreisaitl, who, by the way, is is a pretty good guy to, to rest a game on because he's pretty good too. But point is, I think Dallas is is more well-equipped than anyone that Edmonton has played so far in terms of being able to shut down the stars and then also get uh, your goaltender to bail you out. So I just think Dallas top to bottom is the better team. That being said, Oilers fans are probably loving that I'm saying this right now because all McDavid needs is doubters. And if people are doubting McDavid, you know exactly what he's going to do. He's going to put up three points a game, night in, night out, and will his way to the Stanley Cup final. I'm picking Dallas, but I'm nervous. I haven't figured out which game yet, but I'm probably going to put down like two bucks on McDavid scoring five points one of these series, or one of these games. (laughs) Yes. Because there's so much like, oh, he didn't show up against Vancouver. Like, yeah, okay, look out. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. exactly. And that's, you know, and that's on him being the best player in the world still, even though I think most people would say that Leon Dreisaitl has been the best player through this playoff run for this team. I wouldn't even say that. I would say Evan Bouchard has been the best player. Well, he's been pretty good setting too. the NHL playoff record for points by a defenseman through two series. He's been pretty good too. I, I forgot about him, but in terms of forwards, maybe I'll narrow it down a bit there. But then there's Zach Hyman who has like 10 yeah. goals or whatever. So he's been good. But yeah. 
point is, I, I just think Dallas is deeper and especially to like Harper, I, I know you probably want to talk about this, but it, it's the goaltending for me as well. How yeah. big of a story was the goaltending in Edmonton throughout this entire series uh, in round two? Calvin Pickard was making starts and winning games for this team, you know, and at the other end, it was, it was Arthur Shiloffs who had no NHL playoff experience prior to that series. So I just think the narrative totally changes, uh, you know, when you're playing a guy who has experience compared to, uh, you know, a guy who doesn't. And then you look at your net and it's like, okay, like, do we trust either of these guys? Not really i know skinner was good in in that game seven but he also wasn't tested as much as you know you would expect him to be in a game seven so i don't know i'm just not confident in the oilers goaltending at all i think dallas is better top to bottom that's who i'm going with six games yeah no i i I totally get it i and and i'm in agreement with with you too that uh top to bottom dallas is the deeper team um especially when it comes to their forwards and between the pipes with with Jake Ottinger. Um, they just they get more contributions up and down their lineup. Um, you know, all four lines, you know, just looking at the forward group in particular. And and going back to that seven game series against Vancouver for Edmonton, there were a couple of times where I'm sure like many of us out there, I was like, the Oilers are in trouble and they may be done here against Vancouver, but they were able to win game six and game seven in a different way. You know, McDavid and Drysaddle weren't dominating. They weren't, you know, I, I mean, yes, they, they won game six, five to one, but they were defending really well. And this team has proven that they can defend well. You know, not only does Bouchard put up a ton of points and what an incredible season he's had. He looks like a a, a Norris Trophy winning defenseman. But, uh, you know, th- he can also defend. And being on that top pair with Ekholm and, and, you know, Nurse and DeHarnay and everybody – you know they've proven that they can that they can defend and i think part of the reason why stuart skinner wasn't tested very much in in game 6 and game 7 is uh is due in large part because of how well the oilers defended in front of him now in terms of the forward depth again does not match with the dallas stars but i do see some encouraging signs you may not get the production from your Yanmarks, your Carricks, Browns, of course, um, that's a big one, and, and other guys. But just go out there, have a good shift, and win a puck battle. Win a couple of puck battles. You know, we, the, we heard, we, we hear this all the time that this time of year, it's about winning those battles along the walls. If they can, you know, have shifts where they can do that and win puck battles and wear down the Dallas Stars. You know, that's good enough. And then, you know, there are guys that are getting chances. I look at a guy like Dylan Holloway as someone who I really noticed in that game seven. He's playing in a top six role now with uh, Dry Saddle and Kane, had a lot of chances and looks like he could he could break through and and maybe score a couple of big goals in this series. So I do think there are some encouraging signs. And then again, you know, it just feels like we have we haven't even seen the best out of McDavid yet you know I mean his numbers are still ridiculous so far in these playoffs but he didn't dominate the same way that that he can in that Vancouver series I mean guys that first period of that game seven he only played five minutes you know it was a very slow start for McDavid so if he can somehow break through and and dominate uh in in this series and try to wear down that uh, that Dallas Stars blue line. I mean, when you have him and Dreisaitl, you always have a chance. And so, again, sticking to my original bracket and just what we've seen from the Oilers recently here, the those last two games against Vancouver and now going into this series against Dallas, I'm going to take the Oilers in seven games. Yeah, okay. I mean, like you've mentioned, you know, and we kind of touched on earlier, McDavid not scoring does worry me with my pick, <laughs> picking Dallas. But the the way I want to justify it a little bit too is, and you know, 
of course, I'm going to bring this back to the Maple Leafs, but going back to the first round, you know, when I was watching games all across the league, you know, every year I watch the Maple Leafs in the first round and I, and I tell myself, you know, around that time that, you know, like if they get through, this could happen, you know, this team's good enough, whatever, yada, yada. And, and I believe it. I convinced myself of it. But then when I watched in the second round this year, Dallas and Colorado, I told myself the truth that this Maple Leafs team this year was not even close to either of those teams. And it was evident just by watching five minutes of the first game. Like it, it's not even close. So, and I haven't felt like that watching any of these other teams here, including the teams in the East. So that's how I want to justify my pick in, in, in Dallas. Just saying, you know, the simple fact that when I watch this team, it doesn't feel like any other team really compares. And, and it's a shame that the Colorado team had to go down as well, because I thought they were really good uh, against Dallas. And I thought that series was so entertaining. But Dallas, man, like, I think, they're, I think this is their year. I really do. Well, the fact that they handled Colorado says enough, like the way they handled them too. And yeah, that's really how I've been trying to go with these playoffs picks. Usually I try to pick, you know, I try to match up offense versus offense and defense versus defense, all of these different ways. And I look at stats and stuff like that. But this year I just went with my gut on who I think will win based off what I've seen out of them. And that's where I ended up with Dallas and Florida. Um, now, something I will say is I did look at Money Puck because I have to do it. And a stat that I find funny and I think could play a factor in this series because of a Zach Hyman and a RNH or something like that, dry cycle as well, is that Dallas, 22.58% of their goals against are from rebounds. And that to me screams beneficial for the Edmonton Oilers who McDavid just gets the puck to the net and some meathead bashes it in. So it's, I just, I laughed at that when I saw it, but um, yeah, I was on money puck because I wanted to see the balance of hitting in some of these series and some mm-hmm. of the past series. Cause I, 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 I wanted to see how the Rangers in Florida, how that would play out. And uh, it's interesting. Florida gets hit a lot. <laughs> Yeah, it, it it's weird looking at that, right? Because it's like, does that mean that they just have the puck all the time? Or does that mean yes. a combination of them having the puck and for some reason taking lots of hits? Like, I, I always wonder about that. And obviously, stats can only tell so much and you have to contextualize it with the eye test. But are, are you on money puck right now, by the way? Because I yeah. haven't looked at, at the odds. Can you pull up the odds for each series? I, I'm kind of curious. Oh, what, but you and I are very wrong to the odds <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah um, yeah i i actually i came across them myself earlier today edmonton was definitely favorited really uh, yeah yeah it's um yeah edmonton has a 57 percent chance of making the comp final and the rangers have a 56.2 percent chance wow i mean i guess i picked one favorite but just <laughs> I don't, that doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, yeah, I, I picked the Rangers. I yeah, I picked the Rangers. I, man, I just look at Dallas and I think they're so good. And maybe that's where I'll make some money back on the betting sites by, you know, betting <laughs> against Edmonton, who is apparently the betting favorite. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm I'm picking Edmonton in, in seven, uh, obviously, but like... I could you picked them to win see, the cup, though, didn't you? This year, yeah, I did. Oh, I did. Yeah, no, I, I did. Yeah, yeah. It, so, I mean, that's that's a big part of it as well. You know, just sticking with the sticking with the the bracket from before. But, um, you know, I, I could could you guys also not see a scenario with just everything that we've said about Dallas that they somehow end this in five. Yes, six. Like I have them know. winning the cup. This is you're, yeah. you don't have to convince yeah. me of that. I'm yeah, full I know. blown and Dallas Stars fan here. Yeah, Calvin Pickard starts game two uh, <laughs> after Stuart Skinner gets shelled for six. I could see it. Like, of course, I could see yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and you know another thing that that just came to me about the Oilers. Uh, I, I know it was a couple of years ago now, but when they got to the Western Conference Final. 
we, we know what happened, right? They got swept by the, the Colorado Avalanche who went on to win the Stanley Cup. So, you know, I, Oilers fans are going to hate me for throwing this scenario <laughs> out there. But what if that happens again? I mean, D- Dallas is good enough to wrap this thing up early, aren't they? They are for sure. And that year, wasn't that the same year that the Rangers went to the conference finals yeah. in the East? Tampa beat them. So yeah, maybe it's That's right. f- Florida and Dallas in the final and, and Dallas wins. And it's just 2022, but two years later. Yeah. 